So this is the final video on the order parameter and phase separation the and theories of uh, phase changes. Um, and in this um, particular uh, lecture, we're going to look at dynamics of phase separation, um, phase transitions, very, very briefly. Okay, and dynamics is important because sometimes uh, things don't actually reach equilibrium. They freeze before they reach equilibrium, and this is particularly true, for instance, in the formation of alloys in metals. Um, and, you know, basically what happens is things just cool down so fast that um, you never get to equilibrium. Um, as anyone who's done glass blowing will know, the shape you end up with is often just... Um, guaranteed by the um, by the cooling process not by equilibrium uh, effects so dynamics all right so we're gonna look at the Kahn Hilliard equation um, and what we do first is we're gonna take a, a typical system where we have a liquid with two types of particles okay um, and let 5x be the local volume fraction of greens and the local volume fraction of yellows is therefore 1 minus 5x and our order parameters can be 5x. 5x the local, the, the volume fraction of greens. Okay? And we're going to now suppose the system wants to phase separate into separate bits of blue. Uh, well, not blue. Where's blue? Get rid of blue. Um, yellow and green. Yellow and green. So our, big, our system would look like, in the end, if we allow it to phase separate forever, we'd get a yellow bit and a green bit. Okay? Now, uh, how do we write down the free energy function of this? Well, it's just a Landau uh, free energy function, which we're going to look something like this. Um, where is it? Here. Um, it's got a square gradient term, which says, you know, if you're going to have a green-blue interface, make sure it's not too sharp. Oh, sorry, green-yellow interface, not, make sure it's not too sharp. Um, and we're going to have some other bit here, which drives the phase separation. Okay. Now, um, what we want to do is first find a local free energy density. And to do that, we just figure out how E changes when we change the concentration. Okay, so we just do the functional derivative of E, the uh, Landau-Ginsberg Landau, um, free energy with respect to phi. And of course, we don't know how to do that. We just do this bit. That gives us uh, the square gradient term, gives us a grad squared term there. Um, and the uh, other term just gives us the derivative of whatever that is. Okay, W dash is DW d phi. Okay, so there's only two terms there. Um, and now we need to say, well, how does that free energy density drive a flow? Well, it drives a flow in the same way we got flows before, um, due to um, changes in density or changes uh, in potential, in, um, in uh, chemical potential, for instance. And so it's driven by... Uh, the, the current is equal to n the negative gradient of the free energy density, which is that, times some constant here, which controls the flow. Okay? Um, and we're going to put that in this constant capital. We're going to put that into the other parts of the equation, just absorb it into all the other constants so we don't have to deal with it anymore. And assuming that we have conservation of particles, we have from continuity that d phi dt plus div j must equal zero. That gives us the, the uh, continuity equation. We plug in this current into the into the continuity equation, and we get what's called the kahn hilliard equation there. Now, that tells us how phi, the concentration of, uh, was it yellows or greens? I can't remember. Greens, the fraction of greens, changes with time, given that we know what phi is all over the place, locally. Okay, so it's a very simple equation, um, and in fact, if you want to implement this numerically, you would get a lattice, you would um, try and uh, define phi out on the lattice, uh, then you would update this in time. You just go, well, how does phi change? It's say d phi equals dt times minus grad squared, blah, 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 like that. Okay, and that's how phi would change. That would be the brute force and ignorance way of doing things, whether it's numerically stable or not, I don't know, but that's the way you could do it. Okay, so let's try and do that. Let's update this system um, uh, using using the kahn hilliard equation. That gives us the equation for how the things are phase separating. Uh, and um, all of these systems here are started 
um, from a homogeneous phase, that means random yellows and, well, in this case, it's blues and reds, um, randomly mixed, completely randomly mixed, and then uh, evolved in times. So this is T equals 50, this column. This is T equals 500. This is T equals 5,000. Um, and the only difference between this one, this one, and this one is that we've started with different amounts of blues and reds. Okay? And you can see what happens um, if you've gone into the... Uh, this, this, this will be... Um, uh, simulation which is almost certainly spinodal decomposition so you've gone below the spinodal point so you're into into absolutely unstable territory where the blues and the reds want to demix um, and what happens you get little um, little islands of this stuff starting and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and so the, what happens is the red bits which are here have to diffuse to other red bits to make the red bits larger. And similarly, the blue bits, which are all together, it doesn't matter too much for them, they can just diffuse and take over the red bits. And it depends on how much you start with what pattern you get. But in the end, this is a typical spinodal decomposition pattern. You get this kind of stuff here, um, which eventually gets bigger and bigger and bigger blobs. Uh, and then uh, in, the, in the long term, if you wait, do all of these, you would end up with a square which had um, some red and some blue if you waited for long enough. That could, that, that could take a very, very long time. This is a typical phase separation pattern you get from the current Heliard equation. So that's for very simple fluid. Um, there are more complicated fluids, um, and one of these is a fluid of block copolymers. So a polymer, as you know, is a long chain molecule. A block copolymer is one where you have the chain consisting of two different chemically um, distinct species. Here I've labeled them red, uh, and uh, and blue, uh, but they could be um, chemically. This one could be polydimethyl siloxane. This one could be polyethylene. And the thing about polymers is they desperately want to phase separate from each other. That you cannot mix two polymers together. Um, and um, so what would happen if you just had uh, some of this stuff and you cut these in two? You would just get a red section and a blue section. They would completely phase separate. However, we've chemically joined these. So they can't um, phase separate um, totally. They can only do a microphase separation um, where the scale of the separation here is of order 100 to 1,000 angstroms. Okay, and so you can get sandwiches of red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. You can get cylinders of red in a sea of blue. You can get spheres of um, blue in a sea of red. Um, but you get these self-organized microphase separation uh, systems, and they can also be dealt with by an equation very similar to the kahn hilliard equation, but slightly, with a slightly more sophisticated um, free energy. <coughs> and we'll finish off with a picture uh, from um, some work done by uh, two Korean scientists, Jong Kim, uh, it's European Physical Journal from 2015. Um, and they have done phase separation of block copolymers on a surface, theoretically, it's computer simulation, um, and they've used something like the Carnegie and the other equation to get that. And you can see um, what they've got here is unlike the case of a, uh, a or simple liquid, this system cannot macro phase separate. It can't phase separate into, into reds and, and blues. Um, it can only phase separate into um, microphase regions where there's small regions of red um, surrounded by blue. And so they've even done, they, of course you can play the games of this and do it on any surface. They've done it on a sphere, which is nice. They've done it on a donut, they've done it on a cube, and they've also done it on a blind rabbit. Okay, so that's the, the kind of system you can deal with with this kind of kahn hilliard formalism. We're not gonna go into how to solve these, um, but that's the general approach which is used. Okay, so we're going to finally finish with a reference um, in this area. You want to know about this area, um, not just in terms of um, phase transitions, but lots of other things to do with uh, advanced stat mech applications to condensed matter. Um, you can't really go past the book by Chaikin and Lubensky, uh, published by Cambridge University Press, available in probably several languages. Um, but it's, it's more of a graduate level text, but 